In this video, we're going to talk about models and views. The software often requires multiple models and views in one design file. So understanding how to work with models and views is an essential skill for anyone working with the software. If you're opening up a file with civil data in it, you can expect to see multiple models and views. Now, multiple models are used for many things, like to create and manage horizontal geometry, vertical geometry, 3D information, and cross-section data. There's basically four types of models. There's a 2D model that's used for horizontal geometry. There's a profile model that's used for vertical geometry. There's a 3D model that's used for 3D geometry, corridors, survey data, and terrain models. And there's also a cross-section model that's used to display dynamic cross-sections. Now each one of these models can be opened in any of the eight viewing windows that are available in the software. So in the image on my screen, I have four view windows open with four separate models. So let's take a look at how this works. So we're going to continue working in our geometry file. Now note this file is a 2D design file. This is just the default 2D model that we're working in. And if you look down at the lower portion of the screen, you'll see that we have some view toggles here. And you'll see that view 1 is active. View 1 corresponds to the view 1 2D default model that we're looking at here where we have our information displayed. Now let's go ahead and turn on some of our other civil data. So I'm going to go up to the Home tab under the Primary Ribbon Group, go to the Attach Tools, and go to the References. We're going to toggle on the other files that belong to our project, so our corridors and our terrain models. Let's go ahead and turn those on. So select Corridor Route 97, select the Corridor Bridge, press Shift on your keyboard so you can select all those reference files. Go down to the Display button, toggle those on, and then close the reference file dialog. So now we have all our civil data displayed. Now what you see here, again, this is the View 1 2D default model. If we go up to the Home tab and you go under the Primary Ribbon Group, you come over here to Design Models, we also have a dialog that shows us the other models that are available. So we have the default 2D model, but we also have a 3D model available. Now the 3D model inside of that is any 3D information. So to get to that model, we could directly double click on this and it would open it up in view number one. But what I want to do is I want to display both of these views side by side. I want to be able to see my 2D default information as well as my 3D information side by side. So to view both views, what I'm going to do is come over here to my view one window. I'm going to right click and hold down my mouse button. I'm going to select the view control here and you can see we have some preset views that are set up that we can select from. I'm going to select views plan slash 3D. That's going to open up the 3D model on the right. That's going to open up the 2D model on the left. And notice here as I click into a view that makes that particular view active. Notice at the top of the screen it says view one's the default model. If I go over to the right, click into the 3D view. That's view two, that's the default 3D model. Notice how the models dialog changes and shows you the active view there. Also notice at the bottom of the screen, view number two is defined as the 3D model. And once again, view number one is still set to the default 2D model. So just left clicking in each of the views makes those particular views active and adjusts the models dialog box as well. Also notice at the top of the title bar for the particular design file when you do make a particular view active or a particular model active, it also updates the, uh, the title at the top of the screen. So it's important to always know which view you're working in, so just remember that whenever you click inside a view, that makes that particular view active and that's the view that you're working in. Once you're done reviewing these models, simply close the models dialog box and we're ready to continue on. Now you may have noticed the software supports up to eight simultaneous view windows and the view windows can be accessed by the view toggle bar down at the bottom of the screen. So you can see right now we just have view number one and view number two open. To access the other views, all you have to do is simply click on one of those buttons and that will open up those particular views. Toggling the view back off, we'll close those views. You can assign different models to different views. So like in our case, we have the 2D model in view one, we have the 3D model in view two. We could also have a cross-section model assigned to view 3. We could have a profile model assigned to view 4, and so on. So models can be defined in any of the eight views that you see in the, uh, the bottom list there. Now we also have view groups. If you notice to the left of the view buttons, 
there is a drop down list here that lists the view groups and once again you're going to see the default 2D model the default 3D model and you're going to see the multi model views so view groups allow managing multiple views with their varied models and settings so the multi model views allows you to view the 2D and the 3D models and any other model that you may have defined so anytime you have multiple models that you need to see you're going to want to toggle on the multi model views so far we've discussed 2D models and 3D models. Now let's take a look at profile models and cross-section models. Profile models are used to display and create profile data and cross-section models are used to display dynamic cross-sections that are sliced directly from the 3D model. So let's take a look at setting up these particular views. So once again I'm going to come over into my view one window here. I'm going to left click to make it active. I'm going to hold down my right mouse button. Go to the view control. We're going to set up four different views. We're going to set up a plan view, a profile view, a cross section, and a 3D view. So I'm going to scroll down the list here until I find that particular setup. You can see here we have a plan, profile, cross section, and 3D. So I'm going to select that. It's going to prompt me for some views that I want to define. It's going to say select OK to create a dynamic profile view. I'm going to select OK. It's going to prompt me to locate my plan element. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the London Road alignment. So I'm just going to zoom out here using my middle mouse button. I'm going to come over and select the London Road alignment. It's going to prompt me to select or open a view to define my profile model into. So I'm going to come down here to view 5. I'm going to left click in that. And that's going to open up my profile model view there. I'm going to have another prompt that appears to set up the dynamic cross section view. I'm going to click OK on that. Once again, I'm going to come over here and select my alignment for London Road. I'm going to have to define the offset for how wide of a cross section I want to display. So I'm going to key in minus 150 to the left of the alignment. Key that in. Press enter on the keyboard to lock in that value. Left click on your mouse to move to the next prompt. Key in 150 for the right offset. Press enter on your keyboard to lock in that value. Left click for the starting station. Simply key in 50 plus 00, zero. press enter on the keyboard, left click to accept. For the interval, we'll do every 50 feet along the alignment. Key that in, press enter on the keyboard, lock in the value, left click to accept. And then move your cursor into view number 7 and left click, and that will set up that particular view for us. I'm going to press escape to exit the command. Now notice we have two other model views that appear that we haven't seen before. We have a profile model view and a cross-section model view. And these are special models that only apply to profiles and cross-sections. Profile model is set up in view number five. If you left click inside of that, that will make that the active view. And the profile model is used to create, edit, and view vertical geometry. Now there's some unique characteristics about the profile model. Profile model corresponds to one and only one horizontal alignment. The horizontal alignment will be shown at the top of the view window. So this shows you that this particular profile model belongs to the London Road alignment. Now a profile model can also have multiple profiles, but only one of them can be the active profile. So in this case, this particular piece of geometry here is the active profile for the London Road alignment. Elevation labels are shown along the left edge. Stationing is shown along the bottom. This is also a true profile space, so the coordinates are stationed and elevation. Now you may see some, some different colors here as well. There's some shaded bands here that show up. Those indicate areas where there's curvature in the horizontal alignment. So when you just see a regular black background, that means you're in a tangent section or a straight section of your horizontal alignment. When you see the shaded, more cyan looking color, that means you're in the area of a curve. And if you happen to see magenta, that means that you're in an area of a spiral. So this is just some useful information that relates back to the plan view as you're designing your vertical geometry. Now the cross section on the other hand, if we left click and make view number seven active, you'll notice that again at the top of the screen it shows you which alignment that the cross section is being cut along. So once again we're creating cross sections along London Road. Also notice the blue tracking bar that appears in the plan view and the 3D model. This shows you generally where you're located. And then here in the cross section view, if you zoom in using your middle mouse button, you can zoom in and out. And you can see here we're at station 50 plus 00, zero the very beginning of our corridor or the very beginning of our alignment. And what you see here is a live slice 
through the model. So this is a cross section being taken straight from the 3D model view over here. And you can use the view navigation tools at the top of the screen to navigate through the cross sections and drive down your roadway. And if you recall, we set the interval every 50 feet. So as we progress through the stationing here, you'll see it's going at an interval of 50 feet. And once again, similar to how the profile model set up, we have the elevations along the left and the right edges. We have the horizontal offsets from the alignment shown along the bottom. And the coordinates for this particular cross section would be station, elevation, and offset. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.